Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. As part of our Mind-Body Connection series, we'll continue to look more deeply at the three columns and their corresponding action steps. Today, we're going to look at how to utilize the columns when you are in a state of activated trauma, since it takes a different approach. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we'll get back to you personally. And finally, you can reserve your place in one of my seminars or purchase any of my mind-body guides, also known as the PDFs, at www.crushingdoubt.org. I continue to reflect on what the people in this community need and to try to orient you all to how to think about my system so you can build your system within mine. One of the things I try to think about consistently are the problems that everyone runs into in getting better. Otherwise, what good is my system? Well, one thing I've noticed for sure is that a subset of people cannot get the information to settle in well for a variety of reasons. And one of the main reasons for this that I have come upon as I ask the relevant questions is that people are trying to engage with the system when their trauma is activated, whether they know it or not. I define in trauma to mean that your emotional fight or flight system is activated because of a perceived danger in the environment or because the danger has already occurred. Whether you are in this state of mind for large and obvious reasons or for small subtle ones doesn't matter at all when it comes to what it does to you. Trauma is trauma. And no one can tell you what sets you into trauma or not. With respect to the people who claim trauma is being overused, maybe it is at times with respect to accusations of others causing the trauma, but it really isn't for anyone else to decide. Only you know if you're in trauma, truly. As long as you are being honest with yourself, so as not to exaggerate, then you can trust that a thing that feels traumatic is traumatic. This is especially the case when it lines up with things from your past. When you're trying to create your system within my system that can work for pain and symptom relief, the first step is to be able to recognize when you are in trauma or not, because you're working with an entirely different filter in each case, and the whole system shifts during these times. I'll be releasing a how-to podcast later this week on how to recognize whether or not you are in trauma, but I will give you a brief sense of it here so that you get the gist. The The first thing to know about it is actually, do you feel good or not? Trauma doesn't feel good. Being out of trauma feels better. That's the key baseline variable. But the way to recognize if you are in trauma or not is always through the body. Your conscious brain won't know it is in trauma. In fact, it will be the last to know. Because its tendency is to rationalize away problems, and that makes it rationalize away trauma. Your body won't do that. Some of the bodily signs of being in an activated trauma state, in trauma as I call it, are foggy thinking, feeling unsafe, Your symptoms are up, you're angrier than the situation seems to call for, sadder than the situation seems to call for, dissociated, meaning not able to be fully present or present at all, emotionally numb, you might have slowed thinking, sometimes there's a craving of some sort of drive being satisfied, whether it's eating, sex, alcohol, or other drug cravings, or feeling the need to please someone, or desperate for them to accept you, or forgive you, or text you back, or respond to a message of some other kind. You don't feel safe. That's the baseline of trauma. If you have any of these symptoms, you're likely in trauma, whether capital T or lowercase t. Remember to not evaluate whether you should be in trauma. Just take your body at its word. If you're having these kinds of symptoms, you are in trauma and you should be in trauma based on your experience. Now, why does this matter? Because how can you go about business as usual when you've got someone essentially holding you at gunpoint? You can't. More often than not, when people can't figure out my system, it's for one of three reasons. One, they haven't given it enough time to let the information take hold or feel settled in their minds, or perhaps they haven't really done the work. That does actually happen, and sometimes you don't even realize you're not doing the work. So that's one way. The second one is, there are some seeming contradictions in the information in the way they are understanding it, or an area of conflict within themselves leading to a plateau or stuckness. And the third one, they are actively in trauma. So they cannot think straight or well enough to get it or hold it in their mind well. In the first instance, they can give it more time or up their game in doing the work. In the second instance, raising the questions at hand takes care of the issue in the doubt column, and looking at things in the relationship with self that may be holding you back takes care of the issue in the power column. This particular instance does not have to do with the emotions column, since it is about either doubt or that third level doubt about the self which resides in the power column in large measure. In the third instance, the person is in trauma. That's what this video is about. So no amount of effort is going to get the job done to make the system work unless 
they learn to recognize that they are in trauma. I'm hearing that some people actually get thrown into trauma by attempts to master the system itself. And I do understand that. I can see how that could happen. But there is an important distinction to make here. The system does not actually cause you to go into trauma. The efforts to help oneself, after much time and effort leading to a variety of failures, setbacks, or re-traumatizations, means that any effort to get better can lead you into trauma. So this is important because it's not the actual system that is the problem. It's the act of trying to get better without recognizing that you're in trauma. So perhaps even more importantly, you can still use the columns even while you're in trauma. The only way that you can't use them is if you're in trauma but not aware of being in trauma. And that is what I'm finding is happening for a lot of people. So the first step is to become aware of whether or not you are in trauma. The how-to video that's coming out later this week will help you with that. But once you have this down, you can then move past the anger with or distrust of the system. The system's not the problem or the danger. In fact, you're not actually in danger. It certainly feels like it. That's what being in trauma is. Being in trauma is about having an understandable sense of danger, but not actually being in danger. Actually being in danger is also not being in trauma. That's actually being in danger. By recognizing that you're in trauma, you now can safely use the system. But there, was, there still will be differences in how you were able to engage with it. Let's cover what those differences are in each column as you go through it. With respect to the emotions column, if you are in trauma, you will have less clarity of thought about your themes and what is happening in the present. It's that hazy thinking. It just makes it harder to work with. As such, you can still use the emotions column, but you should be aware that your capacity to do so is reduced somewhat. You need to give yourself more time to process things and allow for a longer process, at least at those times while you're in trauma. You will also need to have your trusted sources more in order. You'll need to trust the few people who are your people. You'll need to know which mind-body practitioners even make full sense to you. But most of all, you will need to trust your body's messages over everyone and everything. You may need to go over material again and again, but remember this clue. The more you forget something, the more likely it is to be true and incredibly important. Even if the information is temporarily lost, Trust that it is still in your unconscious and that it will resurface as trauma recedes. And in fact, your brain is still working on it. This clue of forgetting or not being able to hold the information and being in trauma, that clue can still help you gather the right information over time and it will become easier to remember as you make gains and continue to acknowledge the presence of trauma and its tendency to interfere with processing. With respect to the doubt column when you're in trauma, when you're in trauma, your doubt goes way, way, way up. You will begin to doubt your progress, thinking it was an illusion. You're also more likely to doubt the entire system, by the way. Doubt will have much more room to climb right in. As a result, your symptoms will go way up. Take this as a sign not, not of failure in the work or failure in yourself, but as meaning that you are in trauma. Trauma, fortunately, always passes and typically in a few hours or a day at the most. Sometimes people get re-traumatized and they get knocked back into trauma again, but that individual trauma doesn't usually last more than a couple of hours or a day at the most. So think of trauma as a doubt enhancer. You need to be all the more vigilant for doubt and all the more skeptical of your negative thoughts. At times, I don't engage as much in the work until my trauma has calmed down a bit. But I definitely stay calmer about raised symptoms when in trauma because I know the reason without question. Remember that processing speed goes way down and your ability to remember things gets worse in trauma. Progress will be slowed for sure, but trust that the information you once had is still there, even if less accessible now or even not accessible at all for that given moment. I promise you it is still there in your brain. Remember that fear is the emotional form of doubt. When your fear is super high, give the system a rest. Your primary job at that time is to recognize trauma and be kind to yourself. You do not have to do this work always. Use the system when you can afford to do so. There will be good times again, so do not panic if now is not the time to use it. With respect to the power column, I have especially good news here. 
Trauma brings down our, our power when it is not being recognized. But ironically, being in trauma can bring our power up when it is recognized. Why is this? Because the core narrative is already all about trauma. It's all about that awareness. Recall that one of the main power column action steps is accepting the fullness of your trauma. This is the column to use most when you're in trauma. And this is good news, because it means that the system can still work when you're in a huge amount of trauma. It just might be that you need to shift over and mostly do power column work, knowing that emotions column work is going to be a bit handicapped and doubt is going to be way up. But power is, in fact, enhanced by trauma, if it's used well. Your trauma is where you derive your power from, in fact. Trauma leads to strength and wisdom and even progress once it is understood and accepted. When you're not in trauma, all of the usual rules apply that I have stated before. But when you're in trauma, this is also true. But you need to make a few tweaks to make things work. Now, as a recap, first, recognize when you are in trauma. Second, do not give in to the temptation to see the system or general effort to get better as the cause of the trauma state. It's not. That's trauma and doubt trying to fool you and get you to stop. Third, Make adjustments in each column as needed, in the way that I just said. And four, at worst, you can focus on making the power column gains when in your trauma. I really hope you enjoyed this episode on the way to approach my three-column work when you're in trauma. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we will get back to you personally.